Welcome to the MSDW Podcast. I'm Jason Gumpert, editor at msdynamicsworld.com. And on this episode, I'm talking with longtime Microsoft MVP and Dynamics community advocate Mariano Gomez. Mariano is a Dynamics GP expert, but he has also been focusing more time and effort on the Power Platform, creating walkthroughs, demos, and presentations on the various elements. And he has sometimes tied those Power Platform findings back to GP, as he's doing in a new three-part video series on Power Automate and its new UI flow tool, which is still in preview. I talked to Mariano about his findings from working on a range of Power Platform scenarios, how it impacts his day job as Director of Technology Services at McCorma, and how customers running older ERPs might benefit from the latest tools. All right, well, Mariano, thanks for being here. Um, great to talk to you again. It's been a little while, like we were saying. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's my pleasure to be here today, Jason, and uh, always glad to uh, sit down with you and and discuss what's going on as of late. Yeah, I know uh, I know you have a, a busy schedule, a lot of Power Platform um, work that you've that you've been doing recently. Uh, and, and I think what really kind of sparked uh, me to get, uh, get in touch with you was some of the recent um, uh, videos you've been posting um, on your YouTube channel, uh, looking into probably some of the, the most interesting and relevant um, new, new con or new, I guess, new technology that Microsoft's been putting out around Power Platform. And that's um, around Power Automate and what's I think really kind of unique and, and, and great for our audience is how you've been really thinking about how to tie it back to Dynamics GP and build it into processes that are meaningful to people, right, um, in, in this space. That is correct. And, um, you know, I'm glad you build, you bring up my, my YouTube channel because in reality what I've been doing is I've been trying to um, revamp a lot of the videos that I've been um, posting out there um, primarily around how we could leverage some of this stuff for um, – for the Microsoft Dynamics GP community. Um, I don't know if you've seen some of the previous ones, but I did a series on AI Builder as well. And AI Builder, particularly around um, how to get some of the documents that traditionally companies deal with into Dynamics GP as well, leveraging some of those AI capabilities around form processing uh, to show some, you know, some practical examples on how you could how you could get documents into GP. Now, uh, with UI flows and Power Automate, what I've been doing is showing that there's also other aspects of uh, of the platform that are very relevant to uh, document entry into, into the system as well. So uh, pre presenting primarily another form of integration, if you want to call it somehow. You know, when, you, when you're dealing with these really new... Uh, things from Microsoft, some of them, I mean, like, well, going to Power Automate, the latest, and, and AI, AI Builder, um, some of that's released, some of it's preview still, right? Um, and I guess you have to sort of uh, uh, gauge your sort of, your your judgment on it based on whether it's released or in preview still, um, knowing that it could kind of change or there could be some sort of some issues still that have, have to be worked out. Um, I don't know. How do you sort of gauge that? Is it just that you're uh, you're enthusiastic to try it and just want to see where it's at right now? Um, yeah, primarily my focus has been uh, testing these things out and um, see what are the capabilities that are applicable more than anything else to uh, to a Microsoft Dynamics GP audience. Um, I've also been working hand to hand with the uh, Microsoft folks behind. Uh, some of these features that you've seen me uh, video recording about, particularly AI Builder, UI Flow. I've been working with those teams to um, streamline some of this, uh, these features for the GPE audience. Mm -hmm. um, to your point, uh, anything that's in preview, I do not necessarily recommend anyone to deploy in a production environment. And um, particularly, you know, based on a couple things. One, there's no defined licensing behind it. So uh, until something becomes really GA, you're not going to have the full refinement of the licensing. So you don't want to catch somebody off guard uh, with with uh, probably a licensing um, issue or some licensing discomfort if it's not something that's going to be palatable down the road. 
And the second thing is obviously it's, um, it's software that is still in development. And although when you reach a preview mode, you still have pretty much the end feature that's going to be released. Um, you want to be cautious with that because things change, tend to change by the time something becomes GA from when it was in preview. So, yeah. you know, just word of caution, if you're going to do that, make sure you, um, you know, you use these features, at least the way I've been using them, which is testing them out, make sure they fit your particular need. And um, if you do determine that that's the case, then wait for the licensing and the GA announcement. And that's probably when you will want to um, deploy certain capabilities in your production environment. But for now, yeah, you're absolutely correct. Preview is preview. Um, well, one of the things that you you do really well in, in your videos is you, you break things down sequentially. Um, and... Maybe we can talk just a little more specifically about what you've been showing off in, with with Power Automate, and you know, I, when I say when I when I think of why they changed the term to Power Automate, I think a lot of it is kind of what you're showing off in in this series, which is the use of UI flows and really being able to tie back sort of any applic any sort of desktop focused application. I know GP does isn't just a, a desktop focused, but um, taking a desktop application, automating you know, series of uh, sequences of steps um, and making that part of a bigger automated process, right? Correct. So uh, from a power automate perspective, um, you, you're absolutely correct. The paradigm have shifted a little bit, shifted from, from being merely a workflow engine to uh, something a little bit more capable, addressing robotic process automation, um, uh, you know, features and capabilities. So that's the reason why I think the name expanded a little bit to cover uh, all aspects of automation, not only workflow. Um, from what I've been showing in particular, I like to, uh, and if you've seen any of my previous videos or read any of my blog articles, you know that I'm I'm a fairly descriptive person when it comes to uh, when it comes to these things. So my end goal is to still continue to be. Uh, relevant in that sense, um, being able to break down things, uh, components that users can understand. I, I do believe that the education aspect of, of these technologies is key to um, to their adoption, right? So um, my focus primarily when I put these videos together is to make sure that the end user or the person looking at these videos understand and, di and can digest the steps that I that I put together. I don't necessarily want to make this about all the fluff that uh, goes with the technology, but more um, applicable processes to uh, to a business audience. And I believe that most of what you will see uh, along the um, adoption of power, the power platform in general, is that you are talking to a business audience. Yes, there will be your your ISVs, there will be the uh, partner group, and certainly the power users, but my my focus is talking to that business user. Yeah, and, and I think that does resonate with, uh, especially with, I would say, an audience that's likely to own GP or, um, you know, a, a system like that, I guess, uh, where, you know, they don't necessarily have a team making sort of big proclamations about where uh, sort of their technology vision is going. They might, but really uh, what it comes down to is showing some, ver showing concrete sort of ways in which, this technology can be applied. Um, I mean, to me anyway, and, and that, that it helps me personally seeing that that type of approach too. Yeah, if, if you are if you are a business user and you put yourself in a business user uh, user shoes, the first thing that a business user will always ask is, "How does this apply to me?" Right. So um, that's kind of that's kind of what I've been doing, uh, taking these technologies that can be scary. Um, for any end user, sometimes it's scary for us seasoned professionals. Just imagine uh, an end user somewhere in uh, in the organization, and 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 really um, really try to put it in a context where that is familiar to 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 the user, right? So what I try to do is mostly make a make these steps very sequential, very easy to understand. Uh, try to exclude all the fluff from it. And, and and really put a simple um, case study that 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 is easy to understand. 
I don't know that I've been trying to, um, I, I, don't get me wrong, I'm pretty passionate about these technologies and this is the reason you see me um, ramp up my, my, um, my focus around the power platform. But, um, but I also am cognizant of who's my audience and um, historically my audience have been uh, technologists, but I think also I've, I've spoken to, um, to the end user uh, if you if you know anything about my my trajectory in the, in this um, in the GP space, so um, um, I, I love I love the fact that um, that the power platform gives you the ability to basically build solutions with little or no code. But also, I want to make sure that it's clear that um, these technologies can be uh, daunting sometimes to navigate on your own. And uh, that's why I want to make sure I land some of the concepts uh, to a very specific audience that has been following me for quite some time now. That's a um, it's a difficult sort of tightrope to walk in in, um, in some ways because there's very much a developer community. There's very much sort of a user power user community. I guess you would call it power user like you know, just, uh, the people who tend to own the systems, uh, at, at, at a, at a, at a company. And, and then there's, it, you, you kind of fall into a very sort of, um, small, small group that can sort of talk to both sides of it. You can talk to developer or you, you know, you, you are a developer, you can talk to developers, you understand it, you can also communicate it. I mean, I, I think there's, uh, kind of a shortage of that, of that, um, of that type of role <laughs> overall. Yeah, um, I, I completely understand where you're coming from. I, I deal with it on a daily basis, right? Uh -huh. So um, here at McCorma, which um, is where I work, you know that I have an audience of um, engineers that I talk to on a daily basis, but I also have an audience of um, business uh, executives and users around me that I have to... Um, also serve so it's how you blend or how you kind of uh, blur i should say the um the lines between technology and um and business and and i think uh, that's where you're coming from with yeah. that observation one of the kind of one of the things i've really been mulling um since really with power since power automate was um sort of updated with with ui flows and, and so forth is there's just this whole idea of Microsoft encouraging um, or making it easier with their own native. I mean, I mean, there's other RPA products out there. I just wrote about this that, you know, there's there's other established RPA vendors that did do similar things. But sort of bringing to the fore with with Dynamics customers this this notion that, hey, you can take your legacy um product and you know i kind of use that term broadly it's really anything that's not sort of the latest d365 cl cloud product um mm -hmm. maybe you don't want to yeah. maybe you don't want to upgrade it right now obviously there's, there's plenty of people who aren't aren't thinking about upgrades to to the cloud um whether it's gp nav ax or, you know whatever um other pro other unrelated systems uh bring them mm -hmm. into this automation um uh paradigm and Make that your make that your area of investment. Make that the initiative that you're going to sell your upper management on today. And I mean, to extent, I, I, it's not the same conversation. But like, you know, don't worry about that upgrade that that everyone's sort of fretting about. Worry about you know doing things better with that. In you know, in spite of the fact that yes, you have this outdated, you know, older system that um, you know still serves a purpose and still has has its own type of value. Um, I don't know. It seems like a it, it it it's potentially a very big deal um, for Microsoft to be making this case. Uh, like I said, it's something that other other firms have been making the case for for a long time. But um, you know, obviously, Microsoft being Microsoft, it may, maybe carries more weight. Yeah, the lines of um, cloud and on prem are are blurring as well, right? And um, if you, <laughs> there's one thing that is very clear in my mind. ERP implementations are a cost, um, you know, to the, to any business. They are an expensive proposition. It's not like installing Excel, right? It's not like deploying Excel across an organization. Uh, there's a lot more considerations that go into um, ERP implementations. There's a lot more considerations that go into the technology investments around them. So I would say that um, 
you know, these technologies, Power Automate, Power Apps, even open the um, the the lines and the lanes, I should say, for uh, deploying, you know, and exposing your what you you broadly call legacy applications to to um, more modern processes, right? For example, I, I know companies that are still running um, not only Microsoft Dynamics GP, but you know there are companies that are running tons of even older legacy systems that sure. are um, that could take advantage of this. You know, um, I comes to mind a client of mine that was that is running legacy AS four hundred applications um, could definitely um, see some advantages in. Uh, improving their integration capabilities between the uh, between that system and Microsoft Dynamics GP with some of these RPA processes. So, um, you know, I, I definitely see a lot of potential uh, for, and I wouldn't even call them necessarily legacy, but more for people that are still in the on-prem world, right? And want to take advantage of these uh, cloud-based RPA solutions, and in in, um, in indefinitely uh, keeping up with some of the modern stuff without necessarily busting the bank or or having to convert to a full cloud um, enterprise resource planning system just to leverage those capabilities. So, yeah. uh, you know, this in a certain way extends the life of your on-prem solution rather than than limiting it. Right. You know? So that's, that's kind of one observation that I, I take from these things. Uh, from these type of platforms, uh, Microsoft has done a, a tremendous job, of course, because they own the underlying subsystems that are, uh, you know, for example, Azure and Azure Technologies and Services that these uh, that the platform is actually based on. So it, it's an easier proposition for uh, for for the Microsoft user base community, especially the on-prem user base community, to start looking into these technologies. It's it's actually there's a there's a great value proposition, um, just are waiting around the corner for them to explore. I, I also just wonder, um, you know, going forward, if it will, if if emphasizing these kinds of these kinds of capabilities, um, even though they're, I mean, the idea of just like uh, like in your in, in the one of the demos you did of of sort of automating was it. Um, was it adding an invoice? I forget exactly what the steps were, but it was correct. It's um, it's basically automating the um, invoice entry process mm -hmm. in uh, the payables module uh, using Power Automate. That's that has been my uh, uh, or the last couple of videos that I've done. Uh, but I've also done other other videos where I've actually used AI Builder, for example, mm -hmm. to um, kind of show the same business um, case. But um, that's my that's that's also been my point, right? So showing cost, customers and users more than one way with the same power to, uh, platform tools to do the same thing. Okay. And uh, the the third video that I'm gonna work on is a mashup between um, AI Builder and UI Flow to yet again show how you can um, use these modern um, AI based, you know, robotic process automation based uh, tools to uh, simplify the everyday complexities that are that are involved with data entry, right? So um, I, um, it, it's one of the videos that I'll be working on that should be out probably Monday um, from the date of this, um, of this recording. And, um, and I think that, um, that you will see that that even pushes the limits a little bit more on 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 the kind of stuff that you can do. Yeah, I mean, and yeah. I, you know, I will I will be doing even more um, some other series of videos where I can I can start showing individuals or people how to get data from one system, put it in GP, and and take it from GP and then move it to a different system without necessarily having to write much code. You know. And this so, content is still pretty new. I mean, have you had much of a response yet um, from people in the community who have, you know, seen what you're what what you've been building out in in these demos? Well, um, among my flow uh, followers, I think there's been a uh, you know now Power Automate, but among my followers, I think I've been seeing a, a great deal of response. Like um, 
the, I've released the uh, Power Automate, the, my initial video, the robotic process automation one, where I showed how to build the actual UI flow. That one already has over 170 views in less than a week. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the other one that I released just four days ago, that already has about 80 something views. So, it, you know, I think there's demand for this type of content. There is, um, there's certainly the need for, um, at least if nothing else, the cur curiosity around it um, from our community. So I, I definitely see that, um, you know, I can continue down that this trend and making these type of uh, content. And, and as you said, you know, it, it's fairly new, new technology, right? So me or myself, I find myself learning every day about it and and trying to put it to to practice with uh, with simple cases that I know customers would be interested in. Um, you know, that's that's where I wanna that's where I wanna be. That's what I wanna be doing for the next uh, few weeks, few months until. Uh, something else comes around the corner, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> there's always, there's um, always once it goes into general availability, phase, it's like, it's kind of boring at that point, right? <laughs> yeah, but, there's always the experimentation phase, but yeah. also I want to be able to have a cohesive and comprehensive conversation with my customers when I talk to them about these technologies. So, um, you know, internally uh, here at McCorma, we're leveraging uh, quite a bit of the power platform to. Um, to do our, our work. So um, if we're doing it internally, then I want to also be able to show customers how they can take advantage of it. Sure. Yeah. I, I'm really interested to, really interested to see how, um, you know, GP customers, uh, respond to some of these approaches and ideas and, and capabilities. Um, I, I wonder how often GP customers think in terms of process versus, um, versus, um, you know, I guess sort of higher level process versus sort of functional um, working within GP. Um, I, I'm, I don't know, uh, you know, I've maybe ne never measured it or whatever, but, um, you know, would something like what you're showing here um, lead more, you know, GP you know, solution owners to say, let's evaluate where we're really, where we really are doing repetitive things and where we can now, you know, automate some of those, make them just I don't want to say, not like an API, but you know, make them just sort of contained, um, you know, repetitive things that we can now automate, um, or and 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 it maybe apply that in the broader into the broader yeah, into their business. Of, I don't know. You know, since you bring up GP, think of um, one thing I want to leave to our listeners is think of um, all these macros that you've created over the years to do repetitive tasks mm -hmm. in GP. Um, you created a macro to do, for example, probably the same thing I'm doing, which is uh, automating a payable transaction entry or automating a series of payable transaction entry for numerous vendors. Um, think of uh, those cases where you have macros where you actually entering sales transaction invoices. Um, that's probably a key hotspot to start thinking about implementing robotic process automation tools like uh, Power Automate and UI flows to to sort of um, liberate you from 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 that type of um, older technology and and um, it gives you the opportunity to to leverage not only uh, not only the power platform but then start to introduce. Um, very sophisticated workflows that that go through and um, and, and leverage things like uh, approvals um, just to be able to you know streamline uh, that that process that you already had in place right because typically what happens with macros is you find yourself um, modifying those and and um, and they have quite a bit of uh, maintenance overhead in them just to make sure that um, they are, uh, you know, they are always performing the way they should be performing. And the other thing about macros is you don't have the intelligence, right? So they just perform a task and that's it. If anything else um, happens at the UI level that you need to respond to, those, that macro breaks or or um, or stop, stops working. So uh, this is the advantage of using robotic robotic process automation tools like Power UI, Power Power Automate, and UI Flows because 
you also have the intelligence capabilities that are built into into these tools to deal with unexpected or um, exceptions that um, that might present themselves throughout the the process. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, that's that's certainly something that the you know the community can start thinking about on how to on how to leverage those technologies. And the same is true, by the way, for other. Um, other of our legacy ERPs like NAV, AX, SL, um, where you have probably the same uh, abilities like you have in Microsoft Dynamics GP, um, and probably use some of very similar tools and concepts. Um, so you can start looking at, at, at these um, newer technologies to replace some of that, um, that stuff and, uh, and acquire the intelligence that goes along with it. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, to me, that's one of the most interesting, you know, potential changes um, that uh, that, like you said, customers for really any of these any of these any solutions that are that are on prem, but they want to bring closer to, you know, uh, Microsoft's latest technology. That, that's I think this is where they'll look. I mean, it, it certainly seems like one of the most compelling, you know, possible ways to do an enhancement and going back to your earlier point, you know, without the huge cost risk, um, you know, complexity of a full replacement of your ERP, which obviously, you know, it, it, it has to be done sometimes, but, um, you know, if you're given options that, that provide value in a lo less, a lower risk, lower cost way, maybe that's what some companies will opt for, um, you know, in 2020, um, if they haven't been looking at it yet. Yeah, e ERP ERP customers don't always um, jump off the the uh, the current ERP they're on, and Microsoft Dynamics GP customers are certainly diehard customers. Um, not because not because of them not wanting to consider other options, but rather because Dynamics GP is such a future rich product, mm -hmm. very much here, very stable at this point that there's absolutely little to no need. To um to migrate to any of these other cloud platforms, right? Um, if that was the case, we would see <laughs> NAV customers who have a direct upgrade to Business Central uh, doing that um that conversion much faster than than Microsoft Dynamics GP customers, right? So, um, just because you know you hear a lot of these um, new products acquiring new functionality, it doesn't mean that um that that customers are going to flock to those products immediately. Um, there is still a lot of functionality gap between some of these cloud-based solutions and uh, their legacy counterparts. Um, and, and I frankly don't know. I mean, remember one of the um, one of the benefits of using Microsoft Dynamics GP is the is the uh, incredible amount of ISV products that are out there that um, enhance the core functionality beyond uh, both vertically and horizontally um, and beyond the standard capabilities of the product. So um, that that richness is hard to replace. Uh, and sometimes customers have made significant investments in, in, in these products uh, to just, you know, get off of it from one day to the other. It's, it's just difficult to replace that type of functionality. And sometimes some of this functionality you gotta keep in mind is uh, provides customers with a competitive advantage in the market. So it's hard to give up that that competitive advantage just because there's something cloudy <laughs> that you mm -hmm. can uh, that you can jump onto. Um, yeah, it really makes you wonder um, how much um, organizations like those that you're talking about will be able to look at. Um, you know, Power Platform in in all of its components, um, AI Builder, Flow, uh, uh, Power Automate, um, even maybe you know, you know Power BI, uh, uh, obviously is is a, a a huge part of that, um, and then peripheral things, um, you know, Azure services that support mm -hmm. um, su support some of those those areas with with additional complex you know for so, additional complex needs. It's funny because what I would contend uh, contend with is or, or propose to you is the fact that customers now have the ability to look at those tools more broadly mm -hmm. and um, and and uh, are better positioned to look at those tools because they are not 
um, under the pressure of upgraded, upgrading or migrating their ERP systems to any of these cloud platforms. So that's kind of what I was uh, telling you about uh, the lines between cloud and on-prem um, blurring. Mm. That's, that's precisely what I was referring to. Um, if you're not under pressure for moving or upgrading your enterprise resource planning system to the cloud, then you are now uh, better positioned to look at all of, all these other cloud technologies, um, whether that's power, automate, you know, uh, power apps, mm -hmm. um, power BI, and now power virtual agents, you, you, you can better uh, wrap your mind around those concepts and how they apply to you because you because you're not under the pressure of having to move your ERP system to the cloud. So, and that's a clear message that I want to set. There's absolutely no need for you to abandon what you're doing today to evaluate these technologies. They're not mutually exclusive, which is uh, probably one of the the best things that you could you could do for um, for on-prem customers. Yeah, ab absolutely. Um, so just to, uh, another question, kind of getting back to something you mentioned earlier, just to understand a little more. Um, you mentioned that um, at, at McCorma, you're um, you're adding, you know, uh, the power platform into you know your activities. Can you talk a little more about what you're what you're referring to there? Is it is it more within uh, within sort of your internal uh, internal organization, or is it becoming part of um, you know some of the product planning that you're doing in development? Yeah, certainly our next um, our next uh, product build is going to offer uh, approvals outside of GP, and um, which we call internally. Um, actually, the marketing name for it is uh, Power Approvals, McCormack Power Approvals. Uh, that's going to be our first uh, power uh, platform uh, commercially available product, and. Um, it basically is an extension of our approvals that we currently do inside of GP. We're going to move that to um, to the uh, Power Apps experience, so customers will have the ability to to approve their transactions outside of GP um, in a mobile using a mobile experience that uh, previously we did we did not provide. Okay, we have been evaluating mobile. Uh, mobile technologies to help us um, uh, do some of that work uh, for the longest time. And I think now with the advent of uh, power apps, uh, we were able to see the light clearly. And, um, and, and that's how we implemented our approvals outside of GP. Mm -hmm. Now, um, internally, we are big consumers of Microsoft Teams and with the, we're using um, Microsoft Teams to deliver some of our uh, you know, broader capabilities, analytical capabilities in Power BI, for example, we've, we, we are extensive um, or heavy users of Power BI. Um, we've, we, we are also actually um, deploying our customer portals. So we, we are actually deploying a um, sales uh, portal and a customer support portal that uh, make heavy use of um, Power Automate to uh, notify and, and um, and, and have interactions with our sales team between our sales and our cost, sales team and our customers, uh, also our support team and our customers. And so a lot of that uh, underlying plumbing that goes between our portals and uh, our CRM systems is obviously done via Power Automate um, and, and Power Automate approvals. Uh, we also have, um, let me see, uh, we actually have internally deployed a timesheet application as well that we consume via Teams and, and mobile as well hmm. that um, do allow us to be just about anywhere and fill out our, our timesheets on a on a weekly basis or daily basis, whatever whatever it is now, and that's basically a complete replacement for for spreadsheet that that we were using before. And that was very tedious to roll up to, um, uh, you know, on a weekly basis or a yearly basis to uh, for all the tasks and activities that we had in place. So, um, you know, we, we've been we've been uh, making headways. But the thing is, it's easy for us to do that, right? Because we are a technology company in principle. So uh, we we're heavily 
vested in technology, um, but it's not something that is out of the realm of possibilities for customers to start looking into. And we will be more than happy to talk to customers about it, about some of the things we've been doing and how we can better help them. So, um, yeah, I mean, certainly it's a, you know, it's a great way to be able to um, demonstrate your own, you know, w why you use it in customer facing uh, situations, if you can use it internally. And, uh, I, and, and, you know, I mean, just in, in the first uh a part of what you were talking about with the with the upcoming, you know, power pla power apps based um, app for approvals. Um, that's got to be uh, a, a really uh, uh, what am I trying to say here? It's got to be kind of a good uh, indicator that you know of a pl if you're going to build out capabilities outside of GP in a place, power apps would have to be the place to do it. I would guess because the customer the GP customer base, as we've already been talking about. I mean, if they're going to expand their, you know, their use of an app platform, I mean, Power Apps is is most likely going to be it, and um, that's the place where they'd probably be the most most like to see those those capabilities exposed. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, Power Apps, uh, Power BI, probably on a close second, if not a la par with uh, Power Apps, and and certainly. Um, Power Automate, I think, will is a close uh, in, in a close mm -hmm. third third situation. But you know, we um, we we feel like uh, delivering this solution via the Power Platform was probably the best of uh, of our options because we didn't really have to worry about uh, things that you traditionally have to worry about, like um, uh, deploying and hosting these applications and and um, you know all the security. Uh, layers that are that are on top of them, and uh, I mean, if you start to break down uh, what it would take to to host, to build, host, and deliver a mobile solution, it, it, there's a lot of components to it, and um, you know, we found that Power Platform definitely reduced, uh, and specifically Power Apps reduced the time to market that we um, we had in mind. Uh, we able to focus on delivering the the value. As opposed to focusing, uh, focusing and spending a lot of time on the engineering aspects of the underlying components, um, so for us also it was a win-win scenario um, having to use um, Power Apps to do, to deliver that po that portion, Power Apps and Power Automate. Is there like uh, uh, an area or a capability that, with all the work you've been doing, that you are really waiting and eager for Microsoft to to build out or? Uh, or add in some way to uh, to what's in you know the the various elements of of Power Platform right now. Uh, yeah, well, um, I guess you don't know what you don't know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, I can only speak for the areas that we've used and consume. Uh, definitely, you know, we would like to see uh, some better integration with adaptive cards and, and teams. Uh, I know there is quite a bit of uh, material out there that shows you how to, to use those things, but, you know, there's still, adaptive cards is still like this, um, you know, foreign child uh, child that um, that is out there and that you kind of think about after the fact. And I would like to see that more integrated into the platform. Um, I, I know it's, uh, it's kind of like an office component that sits out there. Um, but, you know, I have a feeling that that line between uh, power, uh, you know, adaptive cards and, and the power platform needs to be integrated somehow in a more streamlined, um, in a st more streamlined way. Mm -hmm. And don't get me wrong, uh, Microsoft has done uh, quite a bit of job around that, um, that area, but I would like to see better integration going forward. Yeah. Um, the other thing, too, I think is, uh, very recently, it just became a lot easier to deploy Power Apps applications in Teams. So that's um, that's something that was um, was um, I, something I was expecting to see that got delivered fairly quickly. So um, yeah, these uh, these integration scenarios is I think where um, where Microsoft will probably you know, once they have the platform down, and you got to keep in mind that the platform is only been out for probably the last two and a half years, right? Um, 
and and this is and so far this is what we have just imagine when it's a sufficiently mature platform uh, all the capabilities that we will have and i think that's where that's where some of those integration scenarios are going to start to be not necessarily second thought one after thought but you know they're going to become uh forefront of um of their development efforts so that's kind of that's kind of what i'm hoping for yeah interesting i i i, I we haven't we don't have time to, to get into teams in, in in all its glory here but i i don't think you can overstate how important teams is going to become in in the rest of the roadmap of of these business applications over the next couple of years um i think it, it with 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 business applications with like you know capabilities around that are today considered sort of t more typical for sharepoint um i think there's just so many things that are going to be drawn into teams over the next uh you know, I don't know, two, four, two to four years, let's say, um, and yep. probably faster. And in a lot of cases, that's really uh, going to be an interesting place to watch um, going into the new year. And, you know, with uh, since we're in December right now, I mean, that's where my my head is kind of going is what's. Uh, yeah, what's going um, you were asking me you were asking me earlier about what would I like to see improved or some of the capabilities that I would like to see uh, better integrated, like, for example, the release of Power Virtual Agents, I would like to see that better integrated with Teams Telephony, which we are using internally. Um, you know, mm -hmm. for example, being able to uh, escalate a call uh, or, a, or a queue call, or I should say a, a queue on Power Virtual Agents out to a queue call in, in um, Microsoft Teams Telephony. You know, those are the type of integrations that I would like to see uh, improved over overall. But again, Power Virtual Agents just got released GA, what, a couple days ago. So you really have to think that, um, you know, these guys are going to make strides to um, to to Im improve those integration points at some point. So um, I just I just know that um, that, you know, I hope to see those scenarios down the road and um, and I definitely hope to see uh, some of these um, gaps resolved fairly soon. Um, I don't have any doubts that they will be. Uh, it's just a matter of um, you know priorities right now for for Microsoft. So getting through delivering these products and in a stable manner and and um, certainly uh, addressing the wider market is probably a priority for them right now than uh, resolving some of these integration gaps. Mm -hmm. So. I believe you will see you will see those things um, narrow out as as time passes by, and and probably those gaps will be definitely closed at some point. Yeah, if I had to make one more kind of wild prediction uh, of of an area, just that it, you made me think of, um, and based on what I've seen, uh, you know, Salesforce promising and, and um, you know, some of the things that are just in preview or just hitting GA from Microsoft, I think voice. And voice voice based AI um, is an area where I could definitely see Microsoft incorporating more, uh, you know, into either AI builder or into um, uh, virtual agents or something. Um, just to again, <laughs> just to throw out sort of a wild uh, a wild prediction. Um, yeah, yep, yeah, uh, so. definitely voice voice recognition um, and AI is probably the next major step. Mm -hmm. Again, I don't know that for a fact, but I, I, I agree with you uh, in if we're making predictions, that's probably the next uh, wave of um, of improvements in AI. Um, I would definitely say, uh, you know, the, a the AI platform itself will probably uh, become more friendly as um, as you move along. And, and I don't know if you're familiar with the latest um, improvements in AI Builder, but, you know, little by little, they are actually expanding um, or in, incorporating uh, more and more of these services that were already built on Azure mm -hmm. into self-service AI capabilities that customers can, can leverage without, you know, the need to know the minutia behind it. So um, I have, I have a pretty great uh, feeling that these the next year at least next couple of years will be um, 
will be critical to delivering uh, some of those improvements to to for end users to continue leveraging on their uh, quest to building intelligent applications. Yeah, I, I think with um, I think intelligent recommendations in various contexts are another one. Um, whether it's um, just an an app. Uh, you know, an, an ISV add-on that's sort of watching and analyzing how you work and recommending either next next steps or adjustments to your to optimize processes. I mean, there's just so many possibilities there that become, I think, uh, less uh, expensive to develop or less expensive to, you know, put into action if, like you said, some of these um, these fairly complex technical capabilities that drive the AI are more accessible. Correct. Yeah. yeah. All right. Interesting stuff. Um, well, thanks so much, Mario. I know you're uh, kind of in the midst of a lot of travel here. You have uh, some presentations going on uh, in the next few days at part of uh, 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 the Power Platform World Tour, right? Um, so probably, That's correct. I'll, so be in, I'll be in San Diego next week. I, I have precisely a session on AI Builder. Uh, but I'm also participating in the um, expert panel uh, for questions at the end of the um, the the you know the sessions that I'm delivering. So um, it, it's it's an exciting time to be in this business. You know, I you probably have known me for quite some time in the GP space, but um, my my next uh, inroad is to is to definitely land. And bring some of these ideas um, more and more to our our GP space and 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 the wider community in general. Um, if you think that GP customers are the only ones thinking about this, I mean, you have a wider community of users that are um, that are thinking about these same capabilities and how to incorporate them. To me, it's easier just to explain them and show them off with GP. Um, but you know. There, if you if you browse through my YouTube channel, you'll see that I have scenarios that go just beyond GP and and um, and being able to uh, to bring those to to light is is also important to me. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I, I can I can understand that, and you can certainly see it coming through in in some of the work that you've been doing. So um, definitely point people um, to your your YouTube channel for anyone listening if you haven't seen it yet and you really want an understanding of what. Power Platform can do. It's a it's a great look. So uh, so thanks for taking the time to be here. Um, you know, safe travels uh, throughout the throughout the winter, as it were in the uh, in the northern hemisphere here. Yeah, <laughs> well, uh, thank you very much. It's always a pleasure sitting down and talking to you. And uh, definitely um, visit my YouTube channel. I'm sure you're gonna probably provide a link to it we will, be yeah. beneath the uh, the podcast and. Um, and uh, you know, subscribe to it. That's the way to keep up with the uh, the latest and greatest that's going on. Uh, probably be at the time to wish you also a happy holiday uh, season and um, and uh, you know, good luck in everything you do. Thanks, Mariano. Same to you. This has been another episode of the MSDW Podcast. My thanks to Mariano Gomez for joining us today. Please do check out his YouTube channel and blog for uh, some of the details that we discussed. Until next time, this is MS Dynamics World signing off.